Hi, this is Dr. Dunbar giving you the Monday Minute for uh, August 15th. Um, I get to sit in my backyard and do this Monday Minute, which is kind of cool. Uh, gives you a kind of sense of uh, uh, my little backdrop. Behind me is a pond. You might hear the, the, um, the water trickling into the waterfall area and it's kind of a nice spot to do this. So I thought I'd go ahead and, and give it a whirl. I want to give you some announcements uh, for this week upcoming. First, um, our unpacked group, um, How to Read Scripture with Reverend Gassaway, meets one more time this coming Wednesday, uh, August 17th at 7 p.m. Again, it's online or in person. Um, the next unpacked group, which is Gospel Inclusivity, begins. Uh, you just heard my frog in the background talking about gospel inclusivity. You might hear him in a minute more. Um, so gospel inclusivity begins Monday evenings at 7 p.m. with Reverend Gassaway for two weeks beginning on the 22nd of August. And then um, with me, Tuesday afternoon, the same group, the same uh, unpacked group, Gospel Inclusivity, at 1 p.m., uh, again with me for two weeks beginning on August 23rd. Those are both online or in person. We do have new links in Zoom set up. Look for the name of the person who you want to do the study with. So if you're with me, look for Led by Dr. Dunbar. If it's with Reverend Gasway, look for Led by, Red, Led by Reverend Gasway, and that'll help you get to the right link for uh, the Zoom link if you're going to do it that way. Women Connecting Through Christ uh, meets um, starts meeting September 8th at 7 p.m. The first study will be uh, Finding God Faithful, which this frog behind me is clearly Finding God Faithful, by Kelly Minter. Um, it can be bought on Amazon, or you can uh, let Janice Gassaway know of, of your need, and she can get you a copy before September 1st. Last announcement, God's Country Cooperative Parish Mission Group, Mission uh, Trip rather, is leaving um, fairly soon. The registration deadline is actually today, August 15th. So make sure you get registered if you'd like to go. The trip dates are August 28th through September 1st. It is a fabulous experience, that is for sure, in a wonderful part of God's world. We're um, gonna be doing some um, additional uh, unpack group topics. Um, and one of those uh, has been on prayer. Uh, we're gonna be doing some uh, different ones. One of ones upcoming will be on Psalms, how to read the Psalms and get an understanding of various Psalm types um, in September. But Psalms and prayers have a lot in common a lot of times. And so um, rather than read you a Psalm, which I actually did think about, I'm gonna read you a prayer uh, to think about this week. Uh, this comes from a book uh, called A Book of Uncommon Prayer by uh, Kenneth Pilfer. And Kenneth just is a really good, uh, you, you'd use the expression, I use it, pithy writer. Um, he has a lot of expressions that kind of help us uh, sort of understand uh, or get deeper to our emotions. And so I'm going to read this prayer. I want you to sort of, you know, maybe close your eyes as I'm reading it and sort of listen to it um, and just let it roll over you. Because I think many of the things that he writes about we're struggling with in our world today. A lot of times we just don't quite know what to do. We, we don't, we, we're, we're, we're sort of in this uh, post-COVID coma, I keep calling it. Knowing, what am I doing? How do I act? Um, how, what do I pray for? I'm confused. I'm puzzled. Uh, there's tragedies that go on in our world and we wrestle with those. And so I just you know, wanted to sort of pitch the idea that the Psalms are a way of praying. And we'll, we'll talk about those. There's many, many Psalms that we can talk about when we talk about how you pray with the Psalms. But because they are prayer and because sometimes people write prayers that are so similar to the way the Psalms are written, I kind of wanted to give you a feeling for what that might be like as well. So this Psalm, this prayer rather, is called, um, I am not sure how to pray. Uh, again, Kenneth Pilfer writes in the Book of Uncommon Prayer. It's kind of an older book, but I use it from time to time to really kind of help me center myself as well. So pray with me as, we, um, as I read this to you. How should I pray, O Lord? Should I wait until my life is cleansed and my spirit is hot? 
Or should I come just as I am with my half-hearted commitment and my on-again, off-again faith? How should I pray? Should I choose my words carefully and phrase my petitions with discrimination? Should I sit very straight and very still? Or should I let my needs roll out and my doubts and difficulties show? How should I pray? O oh God of the morning sun and the evening shadow, how should I pray in the high, hot noon of life? I really do not know. Once our Lord told us that we should pray like this, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and then poured out petitions about daily bread and forgiveness of others that we may be forgiven. Temptations to be delivered from and evil to be spared. Those are all things that press in upon us. So I do pray for daily bread. I do pray for the material things of life that I may have what I can use and that I may use what I have. I pray for the grace to exercise forgiveness where I have been wronged. Deliver me from the stuffy, condescending attitude of self-righteousness. Help me to have honesty and the courage to accept my share of responsibility where broken relationships exist. Help me from keeping simple words to cover a rejecting spirit. I ask to be delivered from temptations I ask to be delivered from deceiving myself about temptations. For too often, I only mean that I want to be rescued from the consequences of my behavior and the evil which I desire to be spared is too often the result of my headlong pursuit of my own selfish whims. I try to put my burdens on you, O oh God, that are mine to bear. I try to avoid the strain on my own willpower and call upon my sense of love. By asking you to take responsibility, I know I should not, and yet I do. So how should I pray, O oh God? I do not really know how I should but I have prayed the best I can, and where I have left unsaid what should have been said, O Lord of my heart, take the intention, my intention, for the deed itself. Amen. I hope you found this comforting and helpful I love this particular line, for too often I only mean that I want to be rescued from the consequences of my own behavior. We just struggle with that stuff, don't we? I mean, I certainly do. I'm not, a, I'm not immune. I'm a human. I love to be a human. <laughs> I'm a human. I hope you are a human too. But sometimes we wrestle with those dynamics and we want to be rescued. And it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to ask for rescue, but I also, we also have to take responsibility for our own actions. And the truth is, sometimes we need help to pray. So I often find the Psalms or a, a book like this to be really, really helpful when I don't find anything else really relevant. I need someone else's words to pull me forward. And then I realize those words actually are my own after all. So I would hope that you find this prayer and others like them and books like them to be ones that you can use from time to time when words fail you, when your actions, you're just confused as to what to do and how to pray. But remember that God knows our prayers before we pray. And what our actions are, are just the pieces of the puzzle to satisfy ourselves. 
I hope you have a great week. I hope this was helpful. Look forward to seeing you at church.